Dean Russell. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And uh, may I also thank my uh, honourable friend from Newcastle under Lyme for his uh, excellent speech. Uh, firstly, I would just like to uh, join others in, in paying tribute and sharing condolences to Captain Tom. I felt last year he was almost a grandfather to the nation, and we have definitely lost a, a member of our British family uh, in the past few hours, and I um, send my condolences to his family. He was truly one of the best of us. I would like to come now to the Bill, and I will speak to primarily Parts 1 and 3 uh, regarding the Bill. And I would also like to um, share my thanks to the Ministers and all involved with this Bill, because I believe uh, it really does something quite transformative, not just for the industry, but also for the country. I think when we look back at when the last major change happened, it was in the 1950s, which is quite incredible to think that an industry that has shaped not just how we live, but how we look at the world, how we've understood other cultures, how we've understood each other, and made the world a little bit smaller as we've advanced in technology, um, hasn't had a similar level of change in the rules around it and the legislature and the bills in the same period of time. I look back at my own experience, actually. I, uh, for many years as a student, I worked at, a, at, a, um, at an airport uh, I did jobs, everything from cleaning toilets to uh, patrolling car parks, not that I was particularly threatening when, uh, when walking around in my yellow jacket. Uh, but what I saw back then was uh, an incredible passion by those who work in the airline industry, from everyone who made sure that the planes were safe to, to fly through to those who were flying them. And I think it's right for government to make sure that as we look to the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, that we have an ambitious plan but also one that puts security, safety, and, the, and the, uh, the traveller at the heart of that. And I think with uh, part one of this bill, looking at the collaboration approach and the way that airlines can work together, um, really does do that. I think there's uh, such an important part here to make sure that passengers are put at the heart, and I, I believe that the bill does that very well. But looking at the, the timeline, when I mentioned 1950s since the last major change, it reminds me, as a science fiction fan, of the, the uh, prediction by Arthur C. Clarke in 1945 around the uh, idea of satellites. And back then, that was truly science fiction. We wouldn't have imagined that satellites would exist in the way that they do today, and they have transformed our lives in so many different ways. And I believe with this bill, in particular with part three, we are looking not just at what was science fiction, but seeing it transformed to become science fact. And the role of drones in society over just a few years has been really, really transformative. We look at the way that um, we talk about organisations like Amazon using them for delivering parcels. We look at the medical uh, opportunities to deliver vaccines or other things, especially in far-flung countries where they need to travel far distances and perhaps are easier by air via unmanned vehicles than they would be um, here in the UK. But also with every good move in the shift in, trans in uh, technology and in the shift of fiction to fact, we also have to take into account the impact on real lives. And when we look at the impact of unmanned vehicles on what that could mean for society, it is absolutely right that within this bill we are looking at how the Home Office and how the police can use um, powers to ensure that they are used in the right way and not creating more danger and not creating more risk to those of us around us. We have heard excellent speeches earlier today about the role of um, drones being used to drop illicit substances and, in, and uh, items into prisons. We have heard about the dangers of drones um, at airports and, and potentially risking lives by flying too close or even potentially, if this doesn't come into play, risk uh, flying them into other, other manned vehicles. So I think when we look forward, we've got to look at this in the round. And the bill, I believe, really does do this. It's enabling additional police powers. It's enabling uh, the ability to uh, create an industry around drones that will provide, uh, I believe, up to £42 billion pounds into the economy by 2030. It's creating a lot of opportunity, but doing so in a safe way. And I think when we look back in the next 50, 60 years to the legislation that's being put into place now, I believe they will look at this bill and see actually how balanced it was, um, how it was forward thinking, how it enabled us to ensure that legislation and bills were in place uh, to protect society, whilst not 
uh, binding the hands of those who want to develop new opportunities uh, to create technology that can transform not just technology, but the society that we live in. Thank you.